I got to that stage in the XS650 custom build where I'm going to do the engine tuning. Now this is a 1981 H version and so they do vary over the years with their settings. But um, the first job I'm going to do is check the cam chain. It's quite difficult to see that this dome nut here at the rear of the cylinders is the cam chain adjuster. So the first job is to remove that dome nut. Then taking the 27 socket, or a spanner if you have one, release the lock nut. This now allows you to adjust the 10 mil adjuster at the rear. Now the idea is there's a pin in the middle and that should be flush. So adjust so that the pin in the middle is flush with the outside of the adjuster. Once set, lock it up and reassemble. Next job, tappets. It's a two cylinder engine with four valves. Exhaust at the front, inlets at the rear. Each engine will have its own tappet clearances, so check your manual. But you'll probably need these tools. Feeler gauges, a 12 mil spanner, and I don't have a tappet spanner, but a very small adjustable will do the job. Also, take out the spark plugs, because you're gonna to have to find TDC, top dead center, on the firing stroke of the valves you're going to adjust. Once you have removed the rocker cover, you'll see that the valve adjuster is exposed. The next job is to find TDC. You'll find markings under the generator panel. Always rotate the engine from this side anti-clockwise. These markings should line up on this particular model. But always remember it should be on the firing stroke. You can then check your tappet for the right adjustment. If you have to make any adjustments, Release the lock nut and adjust the tappet. Do up the lock nut and just recheck the adjustment. Now you've found this position on the engine, you can do the inlet valve for that cylinder. Then you can rotate the engine to the other cylinder and do the exhaust and the inlet. Now the tappets are done, you can move on to the ignition system. Put the plugs back in and always check the gap. And the tools you're gonna need are your strobe light and some adjuster, depending on the system that you've got. The original point system has been replaced by electronic ignition, in this case a Boyer system. The back plate has lock nuts, which allows you to advance and retard the ignition. Start the engine and let it warm up. Once you have a good idle, you can use your strobe light to check the advanced setting. It should be firing 10 degrees before TDC and there's a little marking on this model which gives you a bracket. Rev the engine and check with your strobe light that the marking is advancing. It should be about 38 degrees which inlines the mark with the outside of the casing. If the timing is out, adjust the base plate on the electronic ignition. When I first checked the timing on this bike, I'd run out of adjustment. This back plate wouldn't allow me to advance the motor anymore. So what I had to do was undo the lock nut on the rotor, which is on the other side, and just tweak it a little bit, allowing me to adjust the advance and retard where I wanted it to be. Finally, I'm gonna balance the two carburettors. You're gonna need one of these and a flat screwdriver. Hook up the vacuum gauge pipes to the inlet manifolds. Start and warm up the engine. Using a flat screwdriver, there's a synchronizing screw between the two calves. It's a little tricky to see, but it's there. Rotate the adjuster clockwise and anti-clockwise, and you'll see the gauge moving up and down, left and right. The basic objective is to balance the two pressures. So with a bit of adjustment, a bit of revving, a bit of settling down, you can just get a mean average of where the carbs are balanced and synchronized. That's the cam chain done, the tappets, the electronic ignition, synchronizing the carbs. All that's left to do is to get it on the road to check the jetting.